How would you feel if the President of the United States, um, Hillary Clinton, uh, Bill Clinton, <laughs> and his dignitaries pulled up to your front door in his official presidential limousine and personally gave you an assignment? Perhaps it was to speak before the UN to explain your beliefs. Perhaps it was to conduct a Bible study with his family. No doubt you would feel honored. There might also, though, be a good measure of anxiety and some apprehension. Well, that is precisely what happened to the prophet Ezekiel in the year 613 BCE when in vision the official vehicle of Jehovah his celestial chariot, along with his dignitaries, his four cherubs, wheeled down from the north and halted before him. Overwhelmed at this awe-inspiring spectacle, Ezekiel prostrated himself, and as he remained prostrate with his face to the ground, wondering what was going to happen next, he heard the voice of the rider of this celestial chariot speak to him. What did the voice of the rider of the chariot say to Ezekiel? If you will turn with me to Ezekiel chapter 2, and we'll consider verses 1 through 3, and notice what the voice said. Ezekiel chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. And he proceeded to say to me, Son of man, stand up upon your feet that I may speak with you. And spirit began to come into me as soon as he spoke to me. And it finally made me stand up upon my feet that I might hear the one speaking to me. And he went on to say to me, Son of man, I am sending you to the sons of Israel, to rebellious nations, that have rebelled against me. They themselves and their forefathers have transgressed against me down to this self-same day. Well, as we can see from just these three verses, Ezekiel was given a commission, a commission by the sovereign of the universe to warn those who professed to be his people of the coming destruction of Jerusalem in the year 607 BCE. As with Ezekiel, a modern day Ezekiel class has been given a commission from the sovereign of the universe to give a final witness to this generation. Empowered by Holy Spirit, this modern day Ezekiel class, the remnant of the remaining anointed ones on earth, are in the forefront, joined by millions of other sheep. With Jehovah's blessing, his worldwide visible organization has grown into a mighty nation in fulfillment of Bible prophecy, particularly Isaiah chapter 60, verse 22. Over 5 million are now publishing the good news in 233 countries. This organization thus being larger than over 100 nations of the world. A mighty nation indeed. 82,000 or so congregations organized into circuits, districts, and 104 branches operate under the direction of the governing body and central headquarters of Jehovah's Witnesses. As an organized people, all are moving forward, educating, preaching, building meeting facilities, and caring for the grand increase. We can learn much from Ezekiel's example about keeping pace, uh, keeping in step with Jehovah's fast-moving, visible organization. As uh, individuals, though, are we in step with Jehovah's organization? Are we keeping pace? 
Are we progressing spiritually? And that's what it means to keep pace, to continue to progress spiritually. Do we really see what's happening with regard to Jehovah's fast-moving, growing organization? More importantly, are we a large part of what's happening with God's organization? Or might we be looking way ahead, wondering, what happened? Why am I way back here? And God's organization is moving forward. Could some of us be living in the past, spiritually speaking? Are some of us uh, way back in a time warp, spiritually speaking? Back in the Green Bible and Pink Songbook generation? <laughs> some are. Some, spiritually speaking, uh, live in the past. Uh, they have really made little progress spiritually. Let us, for a few minutes, consider several specific ways that the prophet Ezekiel set an example for us. First, though, we want to consider that Ezekiel had feelings, needs, and concerns just like we do. He had uh, obligations and no doubt had anxieties. For example, as a comparatively young married man, he suffered the grief of losing his wife in death. But nevertheless, he never lost sight of his commission as Jehovah's prophet. It took priority in his life. He kept pace. He kept in step with Jehovah's prophetic messages because his life and the lives of others were involved in doing so, as well as his own peace and happiness. Ezekiel had to, to listen very carefully and then speak and act just as directed. New information and procedures were revealed to him progressively during some 22 years of prophetic service. Ezekiel then had to be current, always presenting the right message and taking the right action at the right time. Now, as in Ezekiel's case, each one of us, each one of Jehovah's Witnesses, needs to keep pace to keep in step with God's organization. Jehovah God will not tie us to his celestial chariot and drag us along. We cannot go in on the coattails of others who are spiritually alert. So we must, as individuals, keep step, keep up with God's organization. Ezekiel chapter 2, verse 8, indicates that he was given a roll to eat. Now this wasn't a soft, tasty yeast roll that we enjoy eating, but was a book of prophetic messages a God-given roll or scroll. He was encouraged to eat this roll, as it were. Did he? Did he eat this symbolic roll? Did he take it to heart? Notice his attitude toward this book of prophetic messages that Jehovah gave him in Ezekiel chapter 3, verses 2 and 3. Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 2 and 3. Ezekiel says regarding the roll, so I opened my mouth, and he gradually made me eat this roll. And he went on to say to me, Son of man, you should cause your own belly to eat, that you may fill your very intestines with this roll that I am giving you. And I began to eat it, and it came to be in my mouth like honey for sweetness. Yes, Ezekiel was willing to eat this roll of prophetic messages that Jehovah gave him. In other words, he took it to heart. 
even though it was a bitter message to the house of Israel, yet Ezekiel considered it as sweet to him. He did not stubbornly refuse to follow Jehovah's directions, but he kept pace. He did not fall behind or neglect this commission that Jehovah gave him. To build and to cherish our relationship with Jehovah, uh, we too, just as Ezekiel, must take God's word into our heart. How might we do that? We must keep pace with the spiritual food provided at the proper time through Jehovah's visible organization. The best way to do this is by regular attendance at our meetings, personal Bible study, regular reading of God's Word of the Bible, prayer and communication with Jehovah God, and having a full share in the ministry. Now, these things will help us to keep up, to keep pace, will prevent us from falling behind. Some timely questions we might consider relating to keeping pace is, do I have a good routine for prayer, private study, and meetings? Am I making a real conscientious effort to attend my meetings regularly and consistently? Do I really appreciate the value of my meetings and the divine instructions that we receive? Do I really appreciate the value and the need of private personal study? In prayer. You might ask yourself, do I put forth prayerful effort to get the sense of solid food, the deeper truth, or may I simply be content with the primary doctrines, the primary things? Recall that Ezekiel ate the whole thing. He ate the whole book. He did not pick and choose what he wanted to eat. He ate it all. Similarly, we must partake of all that is set before us. For example, when you read the article recently that shed new light on the term generation, did you really put forth a prayerful effort to get the sense of that solid food, that deeper truth? Did you really get the sense of what that article was saying? Are you now more convinced of the urgency of the times that the end may even be closer than we previously thought? Young ones, too, must keep pace, must keep in step with Jehovah's organization. It's sad to see that while many new ones are constantly coming in to Jehovah's organization through the front door, we are losing many of our fine young ones out the back door. That's because many, or at least some of our young ones, are not keeping pace. So parents, you have a responsibility to help your children to keep pace, to keep up, to progress spiritually. So young ones, you might ask yourself these questions regarding your spiritual progression. How many Bible verses do I know? Can I present the good news at the door? Do I know a simple magazine presentation? Yes, it's important that young ones keep up as well. Keeping pace also means being quick to obey organizational instructions and directions. For example, when residents of uh, nearby river towns recently were warned of the rising floodwaters, they quickly banded together and they were quick to follow directions by sandbagging, building dikes and levees, trying to keep pace with the rising waters of the Mississippi and other rivers so as not to be overtaken. Jehovah's organization is moving rapidly just like the floodwaters of the Mississippi was moving back during flood stage. If we slow down, we will be overtaken, uh, left behind. So we must be quick to obey theocratic instructions and directions. For example, 
Are you quick to turn in field service time when such is requested from the elders? It may be seemingly a small thing, but we are being trained to obey and to follow direction. And there is a real and valuable need of these field service reports. It's needed by the congregation locally, and of course uh, the society needs this information. Do you make a real conscientious effort to obey instructions, to turn in your field service time when requested? Do you reserve motel rooms only on the society's approved list when making reservations for the assemblies or conventions, or do you run ahead and make arrangements on your own, bypassing the society's arrangement? Are you punctual when it comes to meeting attendance, when it comes to the field ministry? Do you make a real conscientious effort consistently to be here at your meetings on time and to support your field service arrangements on time? Are we getting involved in other avenues of the witnessing, other avenues of the ministry? We have been encouraged to do that for some time, to go beyond knocking on doors, but to get involved in street work, work in businesses, and so forth. All of us need to do these things in order to progress spiritually and to keep pace. Ezekiel's vision of things ahead should uh, likewise steer all of us uh, to keep pace and to progress spiritually. He was inspired to record prophecies of deliverance and a restoration of God's people. For example, in Ezekiel chapter 21, verse 23, there is a prophecy about the one who has the legal right to rule at Jehovah's appointed time. Other prophecies deal with the attack of Satan the devil on God's restored people and Jehovah's deliverance of the faithful into a new world of righteousness. We are privileged in these last days to be able to understand these prophecies that were recorded by Ezekiel. By the way you live, do you show conviction that uh, Jesus is now ruling and is directing the final ingathering of sheep-like ones? That the attack of Gog of Magog is just ahead and that Jehovah will soon sanctify himself and deliver into his new world those who keep pace with his organization? Are we building a future with uh, this old wicked world or Jehovah's organization? During the millennial reign of Christ, our lives will depend on keeping pace with revealed truth. We can form good habits now by being quick to obey organizational instructions. Truly, all of us have the greatest incentive and reason to move ahead with Jehovah's visible organization. So don't lag behind or run ahead, but keep up, keep in step by submitting to theocratic direction. To keep pace with the organization, we must repudiate ungodliness and worldly desires. We must not look back longingly at the things this old world has to offer. We do not want to be like Lot's wife, who, when under pressure, looked back, thus revealing what was in her heart. She may have gone through the motions of true worship, but no doubt because of her attachment to the things behind, her attachment to material things, when she was put under pressure, what was in her heart revealed itself. And that can happen to us. If we are simply going through the motions, not progressing spiritually, if the truth is really not in our heart, if it's not a priority, then when we are put under pressure, uh, we, like Lot's wife, may very well compromise because what is in our heart is what will reveal itself when we are pressured. We must apply Jesus' encouragement to stop storing up treasure on earth 
and to keep our eyes simple. Such things as uh, materialism can be a real distraction, blinding us to what really is important. We also have a responsibility to help uh, new ones to keep pace with the organization. Almost 13 million attended the memorial in 1996. While many of them are still attending a few meetings, they all need to see the importance of progressing with Jehovah's Organization as this forward movement leads to sharing in Jehovah's vindication and eternal life. So as we conclude, again, don't lag behind or run ahead, but keep up, keep pace, keep in step. Jehovah's Organization is a real safe haven for us. It's a real protection for us. And we are being prepared to live forever in the new world. If we really work hard to keep ourselves in the middle of the flock, as it were, that roaring lion, Satan the devil, who is out to get us, will not be able to pick us off. Remember this. If you... Stand still now. You may not still stand at Armageddon. So keep pace. God's organization, it will assure us of survival. My wife and I have certainly enjoyed our week of activity with uh, your congregation. And we've enjoyed working with some new ones that we were not able to work with in the past. And as well as to uh, renew old friendships and work with some who we did get a chance to work with first visit. We want to express appreciation for your uh, generosity and your hospitality that you've extended toward us. And we really have enjoyed the week and we look forward to uh, coming back in about six months. And uh, hopefully we'll see you again uh, very soon at our district convention coming up the latter part of June.